Hello, and welcome back to our thing on rational expressions. I had to cut that last video off because of uh, some corruption issues. So we're back. I'm actually re-recording these problems uh, one more time. So I'm going to make the last three problems fast, but they're just so good I couldn't let them uh, go without being done. So welcome to Rational Fractions, part two, take two. Here's our first problem that we've got. Um, oh man, there's all sorts of stuff going on. A couple things to notice right away. I notice an x minus 2, and I notice an x squared minus 4, which is really x plus 2 times x minus 2. So in my heart, I'm suspecting that something is going to cancel uh, out in the end, although you want to be careful. Uh, what you want to avoid doing is saying, aha, I'm so smart, and canceling things right away. Um, that's not how these fractions work. Specifically, the things that uh, are making that not be true are these plus ones out here, right? So you can only cancel if you have a whole single term. Uh, so how do you do this thing correctly? Well, this one, I've tried it both ways, um, especially since this is take two of this video, and I found the best way here is to get a common denominator. So I'm gonna treat the top of this fraction and the bottom of this fraction essentially separately and think about denominators. Uh, on the top, I want a denominator on this term of x minus 2, so I'm going to scratch out that one and write it as x minus 2 over x minus 2. And then uh, what that will become is x plus x minus 2 all over x minus 2. And notice that these can be combined into 2x. On the bottom, I'm going to make a common denominator of not that x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 4 and it's going to be 3 plus x squared minus 4 all over x squared minus 4. Uh, before I do any fraction math here I'm going to rewrite everything with combined terms and simplified and then we'll see where we're at. So I took that top part and in the end I factored out a common factor of 2. The reason being I think that that was a really good strategy is once I saw that this guy uh, might factor into pieces x plus 1, x minus 1, I thought ahead and said, aha, I better get a min x minus 1 up here if possible. So that's why I did that. Now I'm going to rewrite and do two things at once. I'm going to factor this and this as well as converting this division uh, into multiplication, although we're going to use the dot for multiplication again. So rewriting. And then this one, again, uh, we do the reciprocal and multiply by it, so that's how we get rid of the division. So this part is going to go up here. I'm going to write it as x plus 2, x minus 2. And this part, I'm going to write it down here, x plus 1, x minus 1. Now would be a good time to stop and state the excluded values what x is not allowed to equal, and I see that x can't equal 2, negative 1, or 1. And just remember to state those. It doesn't affect us here, like in our final solution, but it would affect our graphs. Uh, and then finally, once you've stated the excluded values, get out your canceling pen, whatever you like to use, and these common factors reduce out, and all we are left with is 2, x plus 2 or x plus 1. And that is a whole heck of a lot simpler than this stuff that we were left with before. So we have two more problems to do. Both of them involve negative exponents. Um, here's what you should not do. Uh, what you should avoid trying to do is uh, Combining them, or in this case, what people were really tempted to do, is this. Moving something to the bottom because it's a negative exponent. Remember that that rule about negative exponents was true when all of the terms were multiplied together, and that rule is only true when all of the terms are multiplied together. That's not the case here. 
because of this one little subtraction sign. So if that weren't there, if this were multiplication instead, yeah, go ahead, move things to the bottom, rearrange stuff. But technically, because of this subtraction, everything on top here is it's a single term that contains some negative exponents as part of it. Uh, so we are not able to just bring it down. Instead, the best thing to do is take y to the negative 1 and rewrite it as 1 over y. And same with the second piece. Uh, now that 2 on the bottom isn't really that bad. It's eventually just going to be like time multiplying by 1 half. So I think we're going to more or less ignore it for now. Oh, 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 get out of there. More or less ignore it for now and work with the top. Now I want to combine these two fractions. And to do so, I need a common denominator. So a great denominator to use here is um, y times y plus 2. I'm going to keep that 2 there, just so I don't forget about it entirely. Uh, now, when I make that denominator, this needs to get a factor of y plus 2. This needs to get a factor of y. So I'm doing times y over y. Now, careful on the top here. I think um, because we put these parentheses here, people, again, like to like multiply these terms. This is just y plus 2, from the first part, times 1, minus 1y. So y plus 2 minus y. Let's keep simplifying. Oh, y plus 2 minus y, well, I'm glad we didn't try to multiply them. That's just 2. So all I have is 2 over y times y plus 2 all over 2. And that's the same as 2 over y, y plus 2 times 1 over 2. If you have a hard time seeing that, maybe think about that as 2 over 1. So the reciprocal multiplied by, and hey, take a look, 2 and 2. So we've really got as a final solution here y and y plus 2. Job done. So dealing with negative exponents, not really that bad. Uh, as long as you know that you shouldn't cancel right away, instead you should write them as fractions, uh, especially when you have multiple terms inside. And then treat these like uh, any other complex fraction that you would deal with. One last problem. Are you ready? Oh my goodness. So here we have on the bottom a single term, but on the top we actually have three separate terms. So again, what you're not allowed to do is like convert this to x to the first. Doesn't work. Another thing you're not allowed to do is say, aha, I have x to the minus 2 and x to the minus 2, and think that maybe you can cancel them or reduce them together and do something like this. None of that works. That is all super bogus. So instead, here's what we're going to do. Write them all as a fraction. I want to write it down, save myself a line. So I'm going to write this as 1 over x minus 1 over x squared plus 1 over parentheses x plus 1 over 1 over x squared. Now, we've shown you the method of choosing to multiply by like a creative version of one. And that's gonna be, to me, a really nice method here. The reason I like that method is honestly, this seems like kind of frustrating to try to find a common denominator with. It's just like, I feel like I'm gonna have to think a lot. So instead, I'm gonna attempt to clear fractions out by multiplying by this x squared, parentheses, x plus 1, all over x squared, parentheses, x plus 1. And I've chosen this strategically because I know that when I multiply this to each of these four terms, something will, uh, or it will eliminate the entire denominator, and it will leave me with just numerators. So I'm going to carry that out. I'm going to do the top first just do each term piece by piece. We'll maybe try to color code a little bit.
So I've managed to clear out all the fractions, and technically, of course, these are written, you know, over one, over one, over one, over one, but it's kind of a waste to write those, uh, as long as you can keep them straight, and I think you can. Um, it kind of distracts me when I write all those, so we're going to take them back away. And now I know they're in funny colors, but really all that we have to do is take this expression and simplify it a little bit. Remember that this minus has to distribute to both terms. Mm. Now I see an x plus one and I see like something with x squared minus one, so I'm thinking maybe I can factor and cancel. But notice this two out front, that actually is gonna prevent us from being able to factor and cancel. Um, at least cancel with an x plus 1. So in this case, problem done. Uh, now, you could also do this with common denominators, but honestly, I think this was such an efficient method. Uh, this was a really good candidate problem for this. There are problems where this doesn't work so nicely. I think the last one on the previous video, it didn't work that way. Uh, the first one on this video, um, wherever it is, clearing out fractions actually doesn't work very well at all, and common denominators are better. Um, so it's sort of up to you, whichever strategy you prefer, but um, you know, I would like you to be proficient with both strategies. So I hope this has been enjoyable. Uh, we'll try to keep it short. Um, practice your fractions, really practice your hearts out. Come see me for extra help. Do more problems. The more you do, the happier you'll be. You can get them from the book. You can make them up on your own. I will make them up for you. Just practice, practice, practice. Help each other out. That's the best way to get better at this stuff. I know it it's truly um, feels difficult but it does get easier with time. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, have a good day. Heck out.